thing that we've looked at, we're going to uh, be given possibly an amplitude, a phase shift, and a vertical shift. So we'll look at, at uh, all three of those things. So before we start number four, we're just going to identify every piece that we can take out from the, the uh, equation that we're seeing there. So looking at this equation. Is this your last person, Dad? You need to go play now, okay? See you later. Your amplitude is two, so that means that from the midline, from your x-axis, it's going to be raising up to, down to negative two, up to negative two. So that's what it tells us there. Your b value is one, so that tells us that our period is two pi. And I just calculated that two pi over b. Yeah. Your phase shift, your h value is going to equal negative pi over 4. So that means every point is going to shift to the left, pi over 4. And then you have a vertical shift, k, of down 1. So a lot of things that are happening here. Yay! So since my amplitude is 2 and then my k value is negative 1, I'm going to work on my x or my y axis, excuse me, first. So my y-axis, negative 1 now is that shift down. So I'm going to redraw this dashed line. This is like my x-axis, my whole thing being shifted down 1. And then since the amplitude is 2, that means it's going to reach a level of negative 3, at least. Or at most, I'm sorry. Negative 2 then would be right there. And 1 is going to be the highest point it reaches because that's the amplitude. It's going to get up to 2. Uh, from that midline, and then we'll go down two units below it. All right, continuing to look at our graph that we're going to make. We are going to graph between 0 and 2 pi. So very similar to what we've been doing. We'll put 2 pi at the end here. And we'll have a halfway between will be pi over, or just pi, excuse me. And then we'll have a pi over 2 and a 3 pi over 2. Nah, that one might get in the way, but we'll graph it in blue to see. OK, so we've got a sine graph. So one thing important to know, if I was going to graph the parent function, the sine graph would start at 0, go to the maximum, go back to 0, down to the minimum, and then back, back to 0. So if I had no phase shift, and I just shifted it down one. That's what my sine graph would look like. And actually, this point should be just down a little bit because it's an uh, amplitude of two. But that's what my graph would look like. But I've got a phase shift of pi over four. Well, pi over four would be any interval in between here. So this would be a pi over four. This would be a pi over four, pi over four, pi over four. So each of those points that I just constructed, maximum is going to be at pi over 2, back to 0 at pi, down to the minimum at 3 pi over 2. So again, this is without that phase shift yet. Each of those points needs to shift pi over 4 to the left. So each one I'm going to be shifting pi over 4 to the left here in just a second. So that's what we're going to be looking at with that phase shift. So a lot of stuff's happening here. Your, your uh, amplitude, we're accounting for that. The um, shift down one, I accounted for that. But now I'm just showing you if I did not have the phase shift, that's what my graph would look like. The phase shift, though, is going to move each of those points to the left pi over 4. So I'm going to head back and now graph, graph this with my phase shift. Okay, so starting at 2 pi, 2 pi brought us back to where 0 is, but I'm going to shift it to the left, pi over 4, which is going to bring me to where this interval is. Okay, then 3 pi over 2 is where that minimum was, so down here at negative 3, but I'm going to shift it pi over 4 to the left, that's going to be right there. At pi is where I was back at 0, but I'm going to shift it pi over 4, which is going to bring me right to here. Pi over 2 is where my, my maximum was, I'm going to shift that. And then at 0, I would be shifting pi over 4, but 
but we can't really see that. So my new graph is going to look something like this. Oops, let's start that over. So something like that. We're kind of cut off on um, where we can see that full cycle. But eventually, one cycle will bring us back to that 2 pi. So we shifted everything pi over 4, which is actually the interval between pi over 2 and 0. So each point shifted to the left pi over 4. Heading on to number 2, I'm sorry, 4b. We're going to graph a cosine. Uh, just finding all of our stats on this one, your a is going to equal to 1. Okay, your period is going to equal 2 pi, and your, yeah, that's because your b value is 1, your phase shift is going to be h is pi, so pi to the right, and then your k value is negative 3. So we'll graph our, our intervals, so we're going to have to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. So this is your new x-axis right here. Okay, and again, uh, amplitude is 1, so cosine you'll start. Oops, I got to graph, or I got to make my, here's my 2 pi. Here's my pi over 2, or pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. So again, if I did not graph my phase shift, I'm going to show that first. My amplitude is 1, so I'm going to go above the negative 3, 1 unit. There's where cosine starts. At pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's negative maximum. At, uh, at uh, 3 pi over 2, it's 0. And then at 2 pi, we're back to the maximum. So if I had no phase shift, that's where my points would lie. But I do have a phase shift. I have a phase shift of pi units to the right. So since it's x minus pi, that's going to go to the right pi. So that means this point is going to be shifted to the right pi units. This point is going to be shifted to the right pi units. This point is going to be shifted to the right pi units. So each of those points is going to get shifted to the right pi units to make our new graph. So as I kind of piece this together, that means then that first point is going to shift from this position, pi units to the right, which is right here. That pi over 2, which was right on the negative 3 axis, is going to shift pi units to the right, which brings it right here. And at pi is where we're at our minimum right here. That's going to shift pi units to the right, which is going to bring us right here. And then we're going to have points from behind in that negative x-axis coming on, but it's just going to follow that same periodic pattern. So very similar to what we saw on the, on the problem number two. This is now just changing into the negative cosine x. And it's, let's do that a little better there so that's just changing into that negative cosine of x graph lastly we've got an amplitude of three on that last one your b is one half so got to do a little figuring on that your period then is going to equal two pi over one half which is like 2 pi times 2, which means my period is going to equal 4 pi. And then you don't have an h value or a k value, so it's not going to shift left or right. It's not going to go up or down. So I'm going to simply just make my intervals. I've got a amplitude of 3. So there's positive 3, negative 3. We're graphing just the interval from 0 to 2 pi. There's 2 pi. There's going to be pi pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Now, since my period is 4 pi, my b value is, is uh, 1 half, 
I can only graph half a cycle. So that's a half a cycle between 0 and 2 pi. So when uh, we're looking at sine, sine is going to start at 0. Then at pi, it's going to reach the maximum. And then at 2 pi, there's half your cycle. So you can only do the top half of sine right there. Sine is, is uh, starting at 0, goes to its maximum, and then back to 2 pi is where it would next hit 0. Then if I did graph a complete cycle, it would go all the way out here. It would go to 4 pi. So I'd have another 2 pi then to make that total, that total cycle. But we only need to go from 0 to 2 pi, so we're only graphing half of that cycle. So that is graphing, getting a little bit more intense with the with the um, H and K.